Lesson number one, squash and stretch. In this lesson, we'll go over examples of what squash and stretch is, and then we'll go into Maya and I'll teach you how to animate a bouncing ball. So the way that I like to look at squash and stretch is that squash is the same thing as compressing. So if you push down on a spring, it builds energy when you push it down and then it'll get released when you let go. So this is the squash position, this is the stretch position. It works the same way if you stretch something, that energy will get released when you let go. So just like a rubber band, you pull it back and then it flies. So let's take a look at a ball bounce in real life. We'll be animating this later in Maya, but it's falling, it's its normal shape, just a regular tennis ball. And then when it lands, it squashes all the way down. And you can actually see that it gets a little bit wider in shape um, but yeah, it squashes all the way down, and then when it bounces back up again, it stretches a little bit from the base. So here's a template of a bouncing ball animation. You can see the same thing happening in this cartoony version that it did in the tennis ball version. It's just more exaggerated. One thing to make sure when you're doing the squash and stretch poses is that the ball stays the same volume, but the shape can change. So for example, if the ball is this size, and then we stretch it, but it's the same width on each side, then it just pretty much grew and it didn't really stretch. So the same thing applies in the squash position. If the ball stays the same height, but it just gets wider, then all it's doing is growing. We need it to actually get skinnier, like a pancake. So here we have a, an athlete jumping and it shows the same principles of squash and stretch that we showed in the spring or the ball. First he squashes down to compress all that energy and then he releases it and is really straight sending him up into the air. He also lands back down into a compressed position so you can use squash and stretch principles in entire poses, not just objects themselves like a ball or something. A whole pose can be called squashed or stretched. So keep that in mind. Another way animators use squash and stretch is in a character's face. Um, you'll see in a lot of Disney style animated movies that the character's head will actually squash before doing different emotions. Like if they squash down before doing a a expression change it could be a gasp a scream or even sometimes a subtle look will also have that squash in it this isn't actually physical physically possible because our skulls are rigid but we get pretty close with our by opening our jaw our eyebrows going up so it's more of a stylistic choice to squash and stretch a character's head but sometimes it can make the character look more alive all right, so now that we've seen some examples of squash and stretch, let's go inside of Maya and try to animate this bouncing ball. All right, once you have Maya open, before we start animating, let's just make sure our settings are correct. Go over to this little icon and make sure the time slider settings are at 24 frames per second. And I like to keep my key tick size at three times. That's just the size of the red line that comes up when you hit a keyframe. Uh, make update view on all and your playback speed 24 as well go to animation and the evaluation mode is on dg make sure that's like that <clears throat> make sure you check box auto key anytime you move a controller around the auto key will automatically set a set a key that's important and then make sure your rotation interpolation is set to this and your tangents are weighted tangents and then the last thing is making sure your undo is on infinite that's that way, in case we make any mistakes, we can go back. One little thing that I like to do is change my manipulator size, actually, to make it bigger. So if you have the line size for your manipulator at 3, then you can see it better. So, All right, once you have those settings, hit Save. And now let's bring in our bouncing ball rig. Go to File, Create Reference with Options. Scroll down and checkbox this and we're gonna type in a name for our ball. I just like to do this. It adds a name before the ball 
rig so if you have multiple rigs that are the same in the scene they won't break when you reopen the scene so I'll yeah we'll just name it ball underscore a and then hit reference go to your ball rig and hit open cool this is our bouncing ball rig and these are the controllers that you'll use to animate it with so the first thing I like to do with this rig is bring it down actually into the center of the bigger controller. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but this way we just have more options with controllers. We can separate our translates and our rotates that way. Keeps it more organized. All right, cool. Let's make a ground plane under poly modeling. Click on the ground plane and then let's scale it way up. We don't really need the grid anymore, so let's turn that guy off. Let's turn on this. This is ambient occlusion. That way we can see the, the ball with a little shadow near it. So that'll help us see where the ball is on the ground. Without it, it looks like that. All right, cool. So we don't want to keep clicking on geometry on accident. So an easy way to do that is going over to here click on all objects off and then only having the curves selected that way we can't select anything else besides curves and then show let's turn off everything except for the NURBS curves and the polygons cool alright let's start animating so let's do our timeline to from frame 1 to 75 All right, so let's key the first frame by hitting S with the main controller selected. Go to the last frame, move the ball over here, and hit S. And now when we play it back, it'll move. We need the graph editor open now, so let's change this mode, the workspace mode, to animation. And down here there's a graph editor that you can click on and we'll be in this. If you can't get it to open, you can always go to Windows, Animation Editors, and Graph Editor. So it's going to be going at a constant speed in the Z axis. So let's just take these keys and make them linear. Now the ball travels at a constant speed. It's going a little slow, but we can change that later. Let's start timing out our bounces. So what I want to do is have every half bounce be about at 15 frames. So every 15 frames, let's hit S. 15, 30, 45, 60, and 75. Perfect. Now let's add our actual bounces. So let's take the translate Y and move this guy up. All I'm doing is left clicking on the key, hitting W on my keyboard, and then holding shift and holding middle click on my mouse and dragging it up. You don't have to hold shift when you do this. It'll move it around like that, but shift just keeps it up and down. All right, let's move this to about 16. And the next bounce, let's do it a little less high, maybe 14, or maybe 13 is cool. And this one will be 10. So this is what the ball is doing now. Let's make it bounce farther on Z. We can delete these keys by selecting them and hitting delete. Select the last key frame, hit W, and then move it down. It's a little too far. Let's move all of them back here. Perfect. We can also change the ball type. Let's do that right now. So go to, click on your main controller, the triangle one, and we can change the ball type to a beach ball. 
So every 15 frames the ball goes in a half bounce. We actually need to make that progressively less. So we're going to shift select on these frames and move them one frame backwards. And then these ones we're going to do two frames. These last ones do three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So progressively the, the bounces will take shorter time. So we ended up at the difference between these two last frames is 11. So 50 frame 54 and frame 65 is 11. So the last frame we can actually do is at 10. 10 frames from 65 is 75. Let's hit S and then let's add the last bounce. This guy was at 10. This guy was at 13. All right, cool. I'm looking at these numbers up here. This guy will be at 7. Let's make sure our Z translate is still good. Nope, our Z translate is messed up. So let's fix that. Let's make him a nice number, negative 50. Delete the other key and make these linear. So we have a pretty good base for the bouncing ball. Now we just need to actually make it bounce. Oop, it's going off the plane. Let me fix that. Cool. So to make the ball actually bounce, look like it's bouncing, we're going to have to go into the translate Y. We select all the keys that are on the ground. You want to break the tangents. The tangents are these little handles on the sides. You break them with this icon and then you hit linear. And then you take these keys up here that are in the air and we're going to stretch them out so they're more like an arc. That way the ball will be hanging in the air for a little bit longer. That looks pretty nice. But let's fix these a little bit more. Making a bouncing ball in the graph editor is pretty straightforward because you can actually visualize what it's going to look like on the screen. But another way to visualize that is by making a motion trail. Just have your main controller selected, go to animation, visualize, create editable motion trail. And we created one in the outliner, but we need to make it visible in the viewport, so go down and show motion trails. Cool. It looks like the hang time is a little bit flat, so let's fix that on these guys. Cool. You can tweak this more if you want. Okay, great. Now let's play it and see what it looks like. That looks pretty good. Now let's add some spin. So this is a little bit complicated because this rig, we have a squash and stretch controller on the top and bottom, which is really helpful, but it only works if the ball is touching where these circles are on the ground. So we need to make keep that in mind when we add the rotation. So let's take this controller and make that the rotation. You can do it on the same controller that we're animating on, but sometimes if you split up your translates and your rotates, it keeps it more organized and easier to edit later. So let's hit S on the first key. Go to the last keyframe, or last frame, I'm sorry, hit S. And the rotation is rotate Z X. And that's the right rotation we want. So each time it hits the ground, let's try to make sure that it hits, it lands on those squash and stretch controllers. So you can add a key really easily on the graph editor by selecting a key, right clicking on the graph editor and hitting insert key. 
So we have a key right here. Let's rotate until it's matching the squash and stretch controller. Let's go to the next contact position. Do the same thing. Add more rotation. And again. And then we can make all these linear. It doesn't really matter for this to make them perfect. If there's a sudden change between the speed on the rotation, that's okay because when it spins, every time it hits the ground, it could do a different speed of a spin. Let's make the first ones faster. The next jump a little faster too. And the last one doesn't have to be so fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So we have fast spin at the beginning and it slowly does less spin. That should look pretty good. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay, let's now add the squash and stretch. This will be the last step. So let's go to the contact position. Click on this controller. We're gonna just key right here. Key next, the previous frame and the frame after. And then let's pick like five frames before the contact and five frames after. And that'll just make it easier for us to edit this section right here. So let's make this one squash down like that much and then we're gonna push make it stretch the next frame and the frame before have it stretch as well. It might be a little bit unrealistic but this way we can actually this way we can actually learn the principle and see how much it helps the animation. So since we set a key five frames before these it'll just go back to its normal position. So let's do that for the rest of the contact positions. Hit a key on the contact, a frame before, a frame after, and then maybe five frames before and five frames after. Push it down, and then stretch. You wanna make sure the stretching is happening along the arc. We don't wanna have it stretch here. That would look pretty weird. Stretch over here. And then the last one. Key, 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 and then maybe four frames before. If you need to move a keyframe in the timeline, you just click on it, hit shift, left click, and then drag it over with your left click again. Oh, I'm sorry. I had the wrong controller selected. Let's delete these keys. It's actually this controller. Key, key, key. A few frames before, a few frames after. Squash it down. Move this up. And stretch that way. Okay. So let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Actually, let's just adjust these stretch squashes a little bit. This Squash is on is a negative 0.24. Let's just check the last bounce. Point three four.
Oh, I see. Select this keyframe, make this one negative 0.34. And then the last one, it'll be the least amount of squashed. Okay, now let's watch it. Let's turn off the NURB curves and the motion trail. And hit play. And here you have a bouncing ball. This is a good starting point if you want to tweak it to make the spin faster or the squash and stretch more or less intense. Um, or how fast it goes or how high it, go how high it goes. You can edit any of that um, to your liking. Um, hopefully this was helpful. If you got confused at any point, be sure to rewatch it again or reanimate it again. Every time I animate a bouncing ball, I learn something new. So it's never a bad thing to try again. Um, let's save this and then I'll show you how to render out a video or a play blast. So hit file, save as, oops. I'll see, save as without options. I want to just save this in Bouncing Ball 2. You can save it anywhere. And then we're going to play blast it. Before we play blast it, let's just go to our render settings and make sure our aspect ratio is correct. So this looks good under image size and presets. We can just put it to 720 and make sure your renderable camera is perspective camera. We didn't make a real camera. We are just going to use the viewport camera for now, which is called perspective. And then right click on the timeline, hit play blast with options and make sure your format is QuickTime and your encoding is H.264. Go to Browse, and this is where you're going to save your Play Blast. Hit Save, and then Play Blast. All right. This is our bouncing ball. Hope you enjoyed that lecture. We're going to move on to Lesson 2.